Dimitri Stephen McGinn with the Sheffield United free kick. And the header goes in from Harry Maguire. And Sheffield United take the lead, just 10 minutes gone. Because I think we got drawn away quite a lot uh, in the early rounds. First of all, Colchester, I think. Defended by a Kungai. And a chance maybe here for the Blades to grab another goal. Oh, it's gone in off the goalkeeper. And two goals in three minutes have put Sheffield United very much in charge. Here comes Porter and sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. And in front of the travelling supporters, Sheffield United. And we were down and managed to come back. Uh, and then Cambridge in the next round. And tough games there were. Tough games, but I thought I remember playing very well at Cambridge. Ryan Flynn. It's the neat ball across and backs the first time finish. Sheffield United have the lead. Still Murphy goes. And he's found the bottom corner. And Sheffield United have their second goal. And one of the pivotal parts of the season actually was. The Villa game was when we truly realised the potential. I think we took six, six and a half thousand that day. And to see them all massed at Villa Park and the uh, the celebrations afterwards, I remember, you know, me and Andy sort of saying, you know, we thought it was a big club and everything, but that, this really brought it home. Murphy, shot took a deflection and beats Jed Steer at his near post. And it's the Blades that go in front. 20 minutes play, Jamie Murphy unchallenged. The ball's not cleared. It's Hellenius! And Villa are level in front of the Holt end. Flynn. Tenacious character, Flynn. And he scored this time with a great strike into the top corner. And Ryan Flynn's industry has deserved a goal. And Sheffield United lead for a second time. And then after that, we believe we could uh, go anywhere. I think we drew a home to Fulham, didn't we? Why that? Club's top goal scorer might have a shot here and he's found Porter! Porter's opened the scoring! What a start for the League One side! He made it all the way into the area. Picked out Porter perfectly. Fulham looking for a way back into this match and referee Andre Mario has spotted something here. Chris David is riling around in pain on the floor and Doyle's been sent off! He's been given his marching orders. Michael Doyle got sent off. Uh, Costa's probably the chance of actually beating them at home. Roddy Yeager. It's to wrap. Now it's Tonkovic. Back to Roddy Yeager! And the equaliser for Fulham. Well, then we went there in the, in the replay, and I believe we'd lost at Crewe on the Saturday and actually hit bottom of the league on 1st of February. So our league form was far from good at the time. And the Cup, we always say it can go hand in hand with a, a revival. The FA Cup really did help us that season. Could be a really awkward period coming up. Extra time it is. Baxter to take it. It could be the last chance. Oh, it's in! It's in! It's Sean Miller! And Sheffield United have won the tie! Extraordinary and, uh, scene! We win it for them. Number change in there. We brought Mark Howard in, kept the clean sheet. Uh, and then we kept the record number of clean sheets after that. Side of Sheffield United and Nottingham Forest has paid off. Biggest crowd of the season gets to enjoy a tie that's really captured the imagination. Uh, we were improving by then, uh, certainly, and confidence was growing. And uh, although we went down early. Reed, and it was Patterson, and it's 1 0 to Nottingham Forest. We, once we, even when we conceded them, we believed we were getting back in, especially at home with the crowd behind us. Rayford ran loose. Cody, there's the equaliser. The I think the, uh, there's still even many, many years on. The miners' dispute was still, uh, you know, between Nottingham and South Yorkshire. So uh, that's always sort of an undercurrent. Uh, but then when we got the, the, the goal, the equaliser, uh, it felt like the roof was coming off at Bramall Lane and then went on. And 3 1 in the end, was it? Something like that. It was, a, it was a brilliant win, brilliant win. There's the pace from Murphy, and appeals for hands, penalty! 89 minutes on the stadium clock here. Chris Porter scores! Only on the pitch for three minutes as a substitute. Jamie Murphy goes again, and that's it! Porter touches it in! Sheffield United are through to the last eight. I think the draw had been made as well, hadn't it, or something like that, and we'd found out that if, if we got through, 
and if Wednesday got through, we'd play them in the next round. So we did mention it to the lads at uh, half time. Unfortunately, Wednesday then went and lost to Charlton. <laughs> we ended up playing Charlton next, but uh, that was another little incentive uh, that came along. It's funny, FA Cup runs, there's always little things, pivotal moments or whatever. A thunderous atmosphere and a sellout at Bramall Lane. Sheffield United, the FA Cup giant killers of the season from League One, looking for a Wembley place against Charlton. Baxter. Well, it's gone a long way. it across the break and just behind him he tries the shot deflects We've worked with John for many years since he was 16 at Burton so we know the sort of player he is and impact he can have and uh, when we wanted to bring him in on loan um, I know the, the previous owners uh, weren't too keen on loan players they said their experience uh, of it was that they don't quite commit themselves as much because they're only here for maybe four or five months. And we said, I remember saying, we, you won't have that problem with John Braford. <laughs> uh, he, the commitment isn't uh, anything that he'll lack. Uh, and he came around, became a sort of cult hero, I think, at, uh, at Bramall Lane. Uh, and again, played a, a, a massive role in the, the cup run. Yeah, everyone's getting a bit excited now, I think. Uh, looking towards it, looking forward to it. And uh, I think it's a different feel to the, you know, from what the lads have, have been saying to the playoff finals. You know, mm. I think so much rides on that. And of course, an FA Cup final at stake. Uh, but you know, when you play 48 games to get to a playoff final, you know, everything that you've done for nine months depends, you know, on that one game. Uh, irrespective of what happens on Sunday, and you know, everything we can to get through, we've had a great cup run. We've had a great second half of the season. Yeah, we knew we were up against it, you know. Um, the way Sheffield United played and fought in that first half, you, you knew they were going to do that as a club. That's that's what you expect. There was an element of worry there, you know, and um, that's why our gaffer at the time, Bruce, um, made some changes in the second half. The turning point was uh, conceding early on in the second half. If we could have got to the hour mark, you never know. And ironically, it was John Brayford. I still see him at the pub quiz and everything. I remind him now and again, he shouldn't give him the corner away. He, tried, he was going to head it clear and he played safe, gave the corner away, didn't want to head it back to the goalkeeper. Uh, and then they got a bit lucky and somebody miskicked one, I think, and Matty Fry ended yeah. up stabbing one. It was a miskick on the edge yeah, of the box, it was wasn't a it? Kick and then yeah, nice and it ended up Matty Fry stabbed him for a few yards, uh, and then the game changed from there on in. But we were never out of the game that day. even at sort of 3-2 and then 4-2. When we got back to 4-3, I think Hull's nerves were jangling a little bit. And uh, we only just got caught on the break in the 93rd minute. It was a hell of a, hell of a semi-final and very proud of the way we played, but ultimately you want to try and get through. We needed to score early to get back into that game because, you know, the atmosphere was, was bouncing and I was watching on from the sidelines. I'm thinking, I was itching to get on, but I was thinking, this is a real tough tough day at the office here, you know, and it could go either way. When did you come on? I think I came on like 50th minute or maybe, maybe six, 67, was it? Yeah. Typical. 
Typical. Mind you, he's got a couple, a couple of important ones for us this season, so. But it was just one of those, it was always going to happen. So like, football seems to work like that. And then for me to come on and work with, with the gaffer now and, and Garns and, and Gaz Crosby, you know, they'll, uh, they'll never uh, let me live it down, really. No. I think every all the all the Blade supporters went away that day feeling very proud that they'd seen the side, I say two leagues below, uh, give a Premier League side. You know, it's, it's such a good game, and uh, if you, there's a way of if you're going to lose, then lose like that. You know, uh, coming there with your held ha heads held high um, and give everything, which we did. I'm just kind of thinking back on my career and just realizing how lucky I was to and privileged to play for a club like Sheffield United. Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and obviously didn't want to leave. We thought we'd done enough over the 18 months to uh, to earn another few, you know, six months or something. Let's see how we go till Christmas. Obviously, everybody wanted to get promotion. Uh, and I remember the <laughs> abiding memories when we first went in and we were the first couple of months, we did struggle a little bit and all the uh, owners kept asking us only one question. Can you keep us out of League Two? That's all they wanted in that first season. So we finished seventh, we got to the FA Cup semi-final. The next season, we got to the playoffs, the League Cup semi-final. And we thought that had been enough to uh, to earn another six months. But well, it wasn't to be. We'll put it straight on in the office afterwards, certainly. Unlucky with the draw. If there's one team you don't want, it's, it's Man City. We had a similar experience when we got with our Burton. And uh, there was Chelsea, Tottenham and Man City and Burton Albion in the quarterfinals in the, the League Cup. And we were thinking that as bad as it would be against the others, we didn't want City. They have the ability to destroy you, uh, to destroy anybody. There's been Bayern Munich 3-0 in a, you know. Uh, so teams from lower leagues, they, they have that ability. Um, but I think Sheffield United can hang on in there and you never know. I just wish them wish them the best in the semi-final against Man City and make sure they bring a, a lot of balloons maybe this time. And 